Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce. And I'm glad to be with you today. I hope you've been following this series. This is a great series. And of course, I'm sharing it with my precious friend, Bill Bauer. And uh, I like to say he's, we've known each other since the early 70s. Yeah. And wow. been teaching together. And actually, God, about the same time, revealed the same thing to us. He's on the West Coast, and here I am in Louisville, Kentucky. So how about that? <laughs> That's something. The, the Spirit is not limited in any way. <laughs> right by time, of course, or space. So um, we've been talking about Galatians 2.20, but there's something that we need, I think, needs clarity, Bill. You know, uh, everybody talks about nature. So uh, that we actually, I'm hearing this all the time, and I think even some of the translations talk about the old, we still have the old nature. Right. We still have the old... Um, well, actually, the the old man is not crucified with the Bible. Says he is crucified with Christ. Right. So, uh, why why do you think people are teaching it that way? Well, you know, the Bible says you're no longer. The first thing I had to realize that, you know, the Bible says you're no longer in the flesh; you're in the spirit. You know, so Norman Grubb introduced me to the fact that I was a spirit person you know, who had a soul and lived in a body, that I was a spirit person. And, I, and that, that really affected me because I thought I was just in the flesh, uh, that, that was, I was a soul flesh, soul body person, that that was my major identity, and had no idea that I was a spirit person. And so I began to get a little light on dividing soul from spirit and... Uh, a flesh consciousness from a spirit consciousness. So I started to get that idea. Uh, I, I was really confused because I, from all the different teaching, I thought I, I had three natures. I had a uh, bad nature, a good nature, a bad nature, a good nature, and a, a human nature, you know. And uh, Sylvia likes to call it the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the, the ugly <laughs> That's what my husband nature. calls it. Oh, you know, your husband calls it that. Right. Yeah, it's the, you know, we have a, a, a sin nature, and we have Christ nature, and then we have this human nature that is really kind of ugly. It's kind of evil, you know. And so when Norman Grubb, Sylvia, quite a while back, I read one of his books uh, called Who Am I? And he has a chapter called Humans Have No Nature. I said, humans have no nature. And I went on to read about that. He said, you don't have a, uh, this, uh, this human nature with a life of its own. You have a functioning humanity that has appetites, you know, and capacities, but it's just a means of expressing a nature. And you have one of two natures you can express, uh, a satanic, selfish nature, the spirit of error, which is really his nature is selfishness, uh, but you can express either that nature or Christ's nature. Before you were born again, you expressed this sin nature, which was really Satan's nature, and that went out at the cross. And when you became a Christian, you received, uh, you were partakers of a divine nature, Christ's nature. So that is your true nature. So you have one nature, and that is expressing out of your beautiful humanity. There is nothing ever wrong with your flesh, you know, he condemns sin in the flesh. He didn't condemn the flesh. He condemns sin in the flesh. At the cross, that sin nature went out, that spirit of error went out, and Christ's nature came in. So now, the Holy Spirit is rightly using your body. You're an instrument of righteousness. Your members are instruments of righteousness. Now, you're expressing Mr. Righteous now. And so that was a wonderful thing to get because I... When, when Norman said humans don't have a nature, I thought, well, that makes me like a nothing. That makes me a nothing. And Norman said, that's exactly right, Galatians 6, 3. If a man thinks he is something, being nothing, he deceives himself. 
So that goes back to Sylvia and I were talking about the cup of coffee, that a cup is empty. It doesn't have a nature of its own. It just expresses a nature. It, you don't really even express, this is a hard one to get guys, the Holy Spirit had to give this one to me, that you don't really, the cup doesn't express itself, it, ex, it, it expresses the coffee. You don't really contain yourself, you contain Christ and you express Christ. You don't technically express you, you express Christ. Now when this all comes together and you have the union reality and clarity, you just be yourself. You just right. love your uniqueness, your humanity, and you just love just being you. But with a wink, it's really He expressed by you or as you or as if it's you. But of course, it's really Christ. So when I look at Sylvia, I say, well, you know, you know how many times, Sylvia, do, we, do people say, well, hey, the only Jesus you'll ever experience is, is you, you know? When they, oh, I see, yeah, that's, that's Jesus there. Well, you know, you know you, what you're really saying is Christ in that person. But people say that all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what helped me is when I realized the nature is really the producer. Mm. And I so um, and I thought, do I produce my own good and do I produce my own evil? You see, who is the producer? So when I realized nature is the producer uh, and I only express the product, really, so the product doesn't have the power. It only expresses the producer. So if I ask myself, can, you know, the human being is called a branch. Can a branch, we know that, a branch can produce its own fruit. No. We're called a temple. A temple is not its own God. It's just the house. So the human being really uh, is, is, is the means by which the producer expresses his life, or in the case of being unsaved, his death life, really. Okay, so if now how do I how do I know this? Well, it says in Galatians 2:20, this is the positive. As a Christian, it says that it is not I, and we've been saying this all along. So it's not I that can produce any life of my own. Right. It's not I that's the producer. Oh. It's Christ. Well, he's the eternal producer. Mm. He's produced all things. He's done all things. You see, he is the energy. He's the power source. He's the, he's the source of all wisdom. He's the source of all power. Okay, so he's the producer. I'm just the expression or the form by which he can express himself in. So it never was me. It was always he. But, okay, in Romans 7 is the negative counterpart to that. Mm. Because Paul says, it's not I, but sin that dwells in my members. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's get this straight. It was never I in Romans 8. So I has never been the producer that produced righteousness. Christ had to do it in, in, uh, in uh, Galatians 2.20. Christ had to do it. So now, even when I do sin, you see, it's not I... It's not the human expression that is the producer. So I'm not the produ The human is is not the producer of evil, and not the producer of righteousness. So there it is. So the human doesn't have a producing nature of its own. So you see, I mean every everything. It's I mean it's just logical that. Uh, you, you can't produce, we know we can't produce good of ourselves. Most people will say, oh gosh, you know, if I say, oh, you're so loving, they'll say, oh, that's not me, that's really Christ. People, mm -hmm. Christians can say, yeah, that. say that. But sure. you see, what they won't say is when they slip into a sin, then they say, oh, that's just me. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Maybe I'm going to try not to do that the next time. They blame themselves. So when Romans 7 says, it's not I, it's not the human I, that can produce the sin, but it is Satan in my members. Well, members is really your soul and your body, so it's more on you than in you, you see. It's really more on yeah, you. Right. So it's Satan gets on me by my thinking 
and projects his feelings in, on me and makes me think I'm just me. And so therefore, sin that, dwell, that can dwell in my members. Now the Bible says don't let sin reign in your members. So it, it doesn't have a, you see it's a separate power other than me trying to uh, ex express when this temple belongs to the Holy Spirit. Doesn't belong to it. This is a temple of righteousness. Right. So now I'm the one that has to make the decision. Am I going to believe what I feel or think, or what my soul is telling me, maybe through a temptation, Satan on the outside projecting on me? Is that really the truth? Well, really, that reality helped Paul realize that the human can't produce good or evil. Mm -hmm. It really helped mm -hmm. him understand that the vessel is just a simple container without a life of its own it helped him realize that then but then how to how, how to get it manifested well right. he saw it was only by the leap of faith to say that the cross has already delivered me like you said that um that he condemned sin in the flesh actually he terminated sin yeah. in my flesh we like to say he's the terminator yeah. He terminated sin in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we still have sin in our flesh? We don't. Now, as long as you believe that and, and you're walking as if you're just a flesh person, you're, you're going to manifest uh, so, uh, the, actually the works of the flesh, that says in Galatians. So the whole truth is walk in the spirit truth of who you are, which is just simply hanging out, saying, Jesus, you, you hit it, you're my being, you're who I really am, I'm trusting you, that's walking in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that doesn't make, it says, you, you won't fulfill it. It doesn't mean that you won't have desires in your flesh. Yeah. Well, we're, we're desiring being. I'm really three levels of desire. I'm desire in my body. We wouldn't want food. Uh, I'm desiring in my soul. I love fellowship. I love being with my friend here. But I have desire also in my spirit because I wouldn't desire God otherwise. So we are, but it, you won't fulfill. See, Satan entices those desires and makes us think they're, they're, they're to misuse ourselves for evil purposes and for sinful purposes. That's not who I am. You don't have to take that. And one of my favorite things I say all the time is this. I won't take it. I'm not taking it. I feel it. I'm thinking it. I'm not taking it. Christ is my life. Right. I mean, and so I've got a whole bunch of other people saying, I'm not taking it. Because, see, we've lived condemned and fo focused in on our flesh and always thinking that the human being had its own nature. And the Bible clearly says that the old nature was crucified with Christ and we have the divine nature. Start partaking of it. Okay, this divine nature leads us to all godliness because it's Christ expressing godliness through right. us instead of sins. Yeah, it's so tricky. You know, what you said was so important that Satan, sin Satan is on the outside of us now and pulls at our soul and body. And so we feel these temptations, whatever they might be, these lusts or whatever. Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you do. There he says in John 8, 44, that it's not even our lusts, it's Satan's lusts expressed through us. But he, he projects himself and we feel these things, so it makes us feel that we have a nature of our, of our own, yes, that it's it in us, that I have this bad, evil nature because it's in me. Well, that's just him on the outside pulling at your soul and body, and then he condemns you for feeling or thinking those ways, you know, and so because you think, oh, it's just me. I have my own nature and it's really bad. And that's him all the while speaking in first person to you, you thinking, oh, I'm having, I feel like I have this lust. I have this, I want this from this person. I want that, you know, and that I, of course, is Satan projecting his thinking. Uh, into you first person you saying I so we don't really know that when we're just thinking those kind of thoughts it's really another force projecting his mind into us or, or you know so anyway so it, it's important to know that he's on the outside now yes you know and pulling at you from the outside and making it think making you think it's just you and um, so I just wanted to say if you do go with the temptation and you agree with it 
you know, you are a secondary sinner. Satan's really the culprit. That's Sylvia and I always give this illustration. If Sylvia is robbing a bank and I'm in the getaway car, she's technically robbing the bank. I'm kind of an accessory to the crime. But, you know, if she robs the bank, I'm, I, I'm an agreeing agent. I am a secondary sinner, and I sinned, and I get the consequences, and I, 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 I confess, I agree with God, say the same thing with God. Yeah, I sinned, and I, need the, I receive the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your cleansing me from that. So we're not saying that, you know, we don't sin. We're saying... The real culprit, the motivating factor behind it, is really the devil. Someone said to Norman Grubb once, Are you telling me the d devil made me do it? And he said, Oh, yes, my dear, that's what I'm telling you. But you agreed, Norman told the young man. But you agreed. So you, you, you are responsible, and you need a cleansing. You know what, Bill? The other day you were telling us of an incident with Norman talking to this man that just kind of drove him crazy. Yes. I think his name... We won't say his name. Yes. But could you tell us that? Because that was very important. Oh, the bluffing one? No. Oh. The one about... Uh... Oh, right. Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, this is this is really, um, really good. Uh, this is an incident that happened out in California. I was at a meeting and Norman Grubb was sharing. And this one fellow who used to annoy him quite a bit um, <laughs> on his soul level, Norman was real quick to flip things around to see God meaning everything that came to him. But uh, this fella came up to Norman and, and Norman had shared out, it's now Christ living in you as if it's you. And he would even say things like, you are Christ in your bill form. And of course people hear that and uh, because they don't have the self uh, divided out right, they think maybe that Norman was saying he was Christ or something. He wasn't saying that at all. Uh, he'd always make it very clear, you're Christ in your human form, you know. So anyway, this one fella came up, and I'll just make up a name here. And uh, he said, oh, Norman, Norman, I've got the revelation of this. Uh, I've seen, I'm Christ in my uh, James form, you know. And Norman said to him, oh, no, my dear, you don't, I like to imitate Norman. But Norman said, no, no, my dear, you don't see. Uh, you don't see it at all. You've got the devil in the first part of that sentence and the last part of that sentence. I thought, I thought to myself, I'm listening to this thinking, what? And Norman said, yeah, you say, I'm, I'm Christ in my James form. So what Norman was saying in the first part of that sentence, that I, I'm, he had too much of James in there. Yes. He had, he hadn't died yet. Yeah, James <laughs> hadn't died yet. So that I was this inflated I. I'm Christ. And then here we go, in my James form. Again, that my, that inflated I came up again. And Norman could hear the spirit of that. He yes. knew that was the spirit of error. And so it made this fellow uh, quite mad. And, and I got blasted just listening to it. I thought, well, I I don't have this fully clear yet either, you know. Oh, I see, but I, I I understood. I got some light on that. Oh, I see. I'm I'm putting independent self in the first part of the phrase and the last part of the phrase. Well, I think you know, we're hearing a lot of that. <laughs> like I can do it. I, you know, you know that verse that says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. That's not talking about an independent I can do all things, mm -hmm. it says, through Christ. It means the human vessel who is not filled with itself but knows that you're dead in Christ and resurrection, resurrected. Now, his resurrected life can do all things through that you need. And actually, Paul was in prison when he wrote mm -hmm. that. And he says, I've learned to be content even in prison. I can be in, content in prison. I can be... Uh, I can be content if, if I'm elevated. I don't, yeah. I'm, I don't take that unto myself either. I, I don't become a big I, when I and feel sorry for myself when I'm in prison. Or I don't rise up like I'm somebody because everything goes well for me. You see, either way, now I, that Christ I, can do all things through yes. Christ. Now yeah. that's different. And I think we have to get that clear. We are not, you know, you, this, the other day, actually... 
um, I was asking my husband to do something and I was kind of frustrated and because I was really in a hurry and I was asking him to do it and I was saying now well I, I need uh, honey I need that and he said mom there's a, a too many eyes in that I went oh that's right that's right <laughs> that's right that's right I'm not a needy eye that's the point mm. you see I'm not an inflated eye I'm not a deflated eye mm. I don't have to go be in self-pity I don't have to be pumped up, puffed up, actually. Humility, I love what uh, A.B. Simpson says humility is. Mm -hmm. Humility is not thinking bad of yourself. Humility is not thinking of yourself at all. Uh, well, now, I good. love that because the Bible says, out from us shall flow rivers of mm -hmm. living water. Out from the most center part of us, out from our belly, actually it says. Now, that's that was on the day of Pentecost. And, I think we're experienced Pentecost, mm. uh, not Pentecost, but uh, no, Feast of the Tabernacle. Mm. I'm sorry, right. I had that wrong. Yeah. It was the Feast of the Tabernacle, the Feast of Glory, really experiencing the Shekinah Glory. And that's what we're moving into today, right. in this day and time. Moving into what it means to have Christ the Glorified One within us. Right. And then actually the final glorification will be that, that that mortality will be swallowed up by immortality. Wow, we're getting close, Bill. Wow, that's intense. <laughs> that yeah, is. It's so wonderful that, you know, as Sylvia and I have been talking, we just love it because it's been such a reality to us. You know, the Bible says, you know, unless you lose your life, you don't find it. So what we've been centering on in a lot of these talks is, in what sense do you lose your life that's a finding out that you already lost it, that false self right. life 2,000 years ago, and you stand on that. And then the Lord works that out in your life where He, he really makes you to know, you know, that you're, you're not a just me or just you with a life of your own, that it's really Christ living through you. And then you find your life. You get your, even your human life back and you enjoying do. that there's nothing wrong about your flesh. Um, you, you never, your flesh never had an evil nature of its own. That's you right. condemn, condemn sin in the flesh. It never had that. a good nature of its own either. That's a really <laughs> important point. It's right. So we can't produce our own goodness, and we do not produce our own sins. Although we're not like Flip Wilson that says uh, Satan made us do it. Actually, there there was a little bit of tr there was a lot of truth in that. He made a big joke out of it, but he. Yeah. He made it so he could excuse any of his sins. You know, we're not saying that. Yes. We are not saying that. We're just saying it really set me free when I realized it wasn't the human me that was evil producing my own sins. That it was really another another power source invading me on my soul and body and in my mind and trying to deceive me. It's identity theft. Satan mm. is a great identity theft. He's trying to steal your identity and tell you who you are. And, and so, you see, but God has already declared who we are. So the truth is, and this is, this is your identity verse. Let me read it. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Doesn't mean just Paul. That means every born-again person was crucified with Christ. You died with Christ. And what died was that old spirit of error that invaded us and caused us to be just self-centered selves, you see. That died, that was severed out of us, but the human vessel, it says, yet I live, nevertheless I live. That's the human vessel we've been talking about. Yet, not I, not that human vessel, that's not the power source. That's just the vessel that holds the power source, yeah. that holds, holds, the, holds the power and wisdom of this life. And it says, but Christ lives in me, in me and expresses himself as me, and the life this life that I'm living right here is not me living, uh, that which I live in the flesh. I live in my human flesh. It can't be evil because this flesh is a temple. I mean, and God, uh, temple of the Holy Spirit, and God's not going to, uh, he's not going to share his temple <laughs> with yeah. Satan. It's only the deceptions that get us triggered and enticements from the outside that always trigger the wrong response. Okay, in my flesh, he lives in my flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So you don't even have to have your own faith to believe this. Sometimes we make faith a works. We make so many things a works, yes. Bill. 
We do. And then you make it a how-to. If you if 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 you make it a works, then you're going to make it a how-to. Is right. that right? That's exactly right. If if you make yielding a works, then you got to learn how to yield, how to yield. If you make sanctification a works, then you got to learn. Then you then you got to do steps or if learn. You, if you make letting go a work, I've got to let go. I can't seem to let go. I got to let go. I got to you know. You make that. You can make that a work. You can make that a works, <laughs> and then that will be a how-to. Yeah, exactly. That's a how-to. That's what, we're, that's what we're advocating here. We don't have a how-to to offer you. We've got a how-who. <laughs> we love that. And let's just say that together as we okay. close this. Thank you so much, Bill, sure. for being with love me. Love being here, and Sylvia. You better come back again. <laughs> we'll do it again. And maybe I'll go out to California. That'd, that'd be awesome. We do travel, you know. <laughs> okay, let's say it okay. together. We don't, don't have, have a, a how-to. How we, we have, have a how who, and, and that, that who is not you. God bless you. <laughs> See Hope you got a lot out of this. <laughs> Goodbye. The more I try, the more I fall. You've been watching Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters to make this program possible. If you've been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box. 43268 Louisville, Kentucky 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268 Louisville, Kentucky 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www.theliberatingsecret.org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here. Monday through Friday at the same time for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.